In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the Spring Cloud Config Server. I'm going to tell you what it is and what's the model that it operates on and why you should be using it for microservices. Let's check it out. So we looked at property files and profiles and all those things which let you configure your Spring Boot applications, which is great for configuring single applications. But now let's move our focus from single services to multiple microservices which run together, right? We are not looking at one service. We are not looking at configuring one application. We are looking at configuring this whole ecosystem of different microservices which are all talking to each other. So the complexity kind of increases a little bit. So these were the goals that we set out to achieve with our configuration system when we started this series. We wanted it to be externalized. We wanted it to be environment specific, different values for different environments. We wanted it to be consistent across different microservices, have version history, and have real-time management of config. Now, how many of these have we achieved by using the things that we've discussed so far as features of Spring Boot? Have we achieved externalized configuration? Well, kind of yes, with property files, right? We created property files that kind of moved the configuration away from the code. We also learn ways to get the configuration out of the jar, have external sources of configuration so that the jar can contain some default values, but then you have other stuff which overrides what's in your, what's in your property files and in your jar. So we have externalized it? Yes, we have. That's a green now. Have we made it environment specific? Yes, we have made that as well, thanks to Spring Profiles. Spring Profiles works in conjunction with property files so that you have different property files for different environments. We've made it environment specific. We've made it configurable so that you take a jar with a bunch of profiles, choose the profiles when you're actually running the jar in the command line so you can have the same jar, do different things, have different values in different environments. We have achieved all this stuff. What about consistency? Have we achieved that? Well, no. Why haven't we? Because let's say I have a jar with some configuration values. Let's say somebody makes a change to the configuration value. There's a new build, a new jar. Now my jar is deployed to two of the three instances of microservices. The other one has the old one, right? The change goes to one, change doesn't go to another. It's not consistent, right? Version history, we kind of have version history because we have put the configuration in the property file. But then again, without consistency, version history doesn't mean anything. You, you might see a config sitting in a source code, somebody's committed it, but you don't know if it was actually deployed, right? You don't have that reliable version history. And then you definitely don't have real-time management. If you wanna make changes, you're gonna have to either push a new build or you're gonna have to go to the instance, make a change, and restart the server, right? You're gonna to have to either pass a command line argument or an external property file. You're gonna to have to restart that instance of microservice. You don't have that either. So we've achieved two of the five goals. Not bad so far. Okay, so let's dig a little bit deeper and see how we can achieve the rest with the solution. That's the topic of this tutorial. Consistency is super important in configuration, specifically in the context of microservices. Why? Why is it important in the context of microservices? Because there's more of them. Microservices is a whole lot of services running together, right? They're all talking to each other. You need to make sure that they're all referring to the same configuration values. One guy shouldn't go to the other and say, hey, this is my DB connection string. And the other guy goes, no, I didn't get that memo. My DB connection string is something else. That's bad, right? You wanna have all these different microservices referring to consistent and reliable configuration values. Now, how do you do this? You really cannot have this consistency where each microservice instance is holding on to its own configuration. Well, the obvious answer, take that out and create a separate configuration service, right? Simple, have all these services, talk to this separate configuration service, have that be the single source of truth, and have that manage all the information. So no matter what the microservice is, it all refers to the same source of truth. It all has the same connection string or whatever else is the configuration that it needs, okay? So we are looking at config as a separate microservice. This is a common pattern. You essentially have one service 
which is responsible for providing your configuration and all the other microservices just go ask that one particular service and say hey what's the value for this what's the value for this and then it provides the service when it asks for the value can depend can be at a certain point it can be when the application starts up that's a different issue right real time updates is a different issue but at least it is consistent there is one source which provides that information okay so config as a service is very popular and there are a few options for config as a service as well you have apache zookeeper which is a very popular solution it's a centralized service for maintaining this configuration information it also does a bunch more it provides distributed synchronization it provides uh, naming services and a whole lot more right zookeeper is a popular choice for saving this information and you have a zookeeper instance running and all these different services go ask zookeeper hey give me the value for this uh, for this property key and then zookeeper provides that answer you also have this thing called etcd which is another distributed key value store you have hashicorp console which is another popular solution which is based off of a data source right and uh, the fourth one which is the most popular specifically in the context of spring boot and spring cloud which is spring cloud configuration server which is what we are going to be paying attention to which is what we're going to be learning in the rest of the series this is the most widely used especially in the context of spring boot microservices so makes sense to learn this take a look at this picture this is a configuration service we have looked at the options for the configuration service let's say we go with the spring cloud configuration service this is what all these different services talk to to get configuration information now how does this configuration service store the configs where does this store the configs is it storing it in a db well that will work but we can do better how about in the source code? Well, we can put it in the source code, but then the problem is it'll result in a redeploy every time we change the config. Let's say we put the config in the source code, but then we make a change, well, results in a redeploy. But, do you remember this? We want the changes to the config to happen without a build, okay? We want to be able to push it without a build. In fact, there isn't a build necessary if you're just having a repo with just a config. Okay, let's say you're imagining a repo with just XML files, with just property files, with just YAML files. What's the build there? What's the test there? That concept doesn't even apply. You should be able to push that directly to production. So here's the model that Spring Cloud Config Server uses. Spring Cloud Config Server sits here, just like we talked about. It is the central server which all these different microservices talk to. Now Spring Cloud Config Server can connect to various different data sources, but there is one data source which is extremely popular. You remember we need version control config, right? We need version control for our configuration. What is a popular version controlled store for information? What is a popular solution for version control? Well, it's our Good old Git repo. Well, guess what? Spring Cloud Config Server can actually directly connect with a Git repo. You heard that right. It's not a database. It's connecting to a Git repo that's hosted somewhere online and it can directly look up the value of the properties in files inside Git repo, which is online. Isn't that cool? Now, with this in mind, Let's take a look at this picture. When the configs are in a Git repo and you have a Spring Cloud config server saying, I am going to refer to a Git repo as a source for information. What does it take to push a config to production? You need to check your changes in to that Git repo and submit your changes, push your changes to that online repo. And that's it. Your Spring Cloud config server is looking at that online repo. It's going to get the changes that you have submitted. So in that sense, pushing the config to production doesn't even need to be pushed to production. All you need to do is make your changes to your config files and submit it to the Git repo because the Git repo is your source for your Spring Cloud config server. 
which is super interesting and super convenient as well. So you get all the benefits of version control and all that stuff. And you also get this, you can deploy to production without having to do the build and test and all that stuff because your, your repo is basically just config files where you need to build or test it, right? So let's take a look at setting this up. We will set up a Spring Cloud config server from the scratch in the next tutorial. So I'll see you there.